Hey guys, what's up? It's that Madden and Gamer here, back at again with another episode of the Under Center Podcast. Today we're here with the Under Center Podcast, episode number 20. I was planning on this being a seven round mock draft video, but due to free agency starting, um, I decided to push that back for at least another episode or two because we'll be coming out of free agency. Um, the lines have been relatively quiet so far, so there's not gonna be a ton to report. So this could be a smaller episode today, but I'm gonna be talking about the main roster moves that they've made over the last few days. And um, I believe I left off in the last video talking about Jesse James, Christian Jones, this kind of guys getting cut, Desmond Trufant, Justin Coleman. But since then, um, I believe I talked about Christian Jones in that video. Since then, they released Chase Daniel. They released um, Danny, Danny Shelton, two contracts that are freeing them up a lot of money, uh, like four million, roughly four million each, something like that. So, um, yeah, two, honestly, bro, I've been telling you guys this entire time, I've been a huge fan of all the cuts they've been making, because it's like dead weight, they just don't need on the roster, it's getting a lot of, it's just getting too much money, if it's coming down to, you know, we're getting a lot younger, I like to see that, I like to be younger and less expensive, because you can develop that younger talent into more expensive talent, but I mean, you're getting guys who you know that you want, and you're getting guys, you're keeping guys on the know that you want, you know, new, new regime typically tends to clean house, so... You know, Dan Campbell and Brad Holmes really like these guys. This is their team. They're younger. Less experience might lead to less success at first. I think these are a lot of young guys who could, you know, have higher upside than some of these older guys leaving. They cut Joe Dahl uh, in favor of probably Logan Stenberg. Or maybe they're going to draft an offensive lineman. Maybe I'll talk about that in my next mock draft. We'll see. Um, they let, let's see. They cut Joe Dahl. They cut uh, Chase Daniel. And they cut... Um, Danny Shelton. So, let's see what happens next. Um, people are kind of hitting the panic button, like, man, we have no one anywhere now. Like, we have, we re-signed Jalen Reeves and have into a one-year contract. Solid linebacker depth. Solid. Okay. We brought in Josh Hill to replace Jesse James. Another good signing. We brought in Tyrell Williams. I talked about this in the last video. Good signing. So, you now have at least a number one, number one or number two receiver. You have your number two tight end. You have a, a linebacker depth, which you need linebackers now because Jared Davis and Jamal Agnew both left, which I thought Jared Davis was going to come back for sure, but sadly he didn't. I don't think I have a single Lions player in my closet anymore that actually like, matches their jersey. I had Stafford, uh, Jones, uh, who had Stafford, Jones, Davis. I have Okuda still. I have Kieran Johnson still. And I just, I've lost a lot of my jerseys, man. I mean, a lot of these jerseys I'm not going to wear anymore. It's, it's, it, it's heartbreaking for a Lions fan, <laughs> but... All jokes aside, Josh Hill, very capable number two tight end, and Jonah Zibin, a capable depth player for sure. Um, you look at Romeo Cora's the big contract they handed out, three years, $39 million. I don't mind that contract at all. That's like 12, 12 13 a year. You look at like what guys like Shaq Barrett just got paid. That's what the market is, man. Romeo Cora, I don't think is worth 13 a year, but with the way the market is right now, he's definitely going to get paid 13 or more a year. So the fact that we could keep him around um, was great. I could see Trey Flowers being a surprise cut. Hot take. Um, I could see you know Trey, Trey Flowers getting cut soon. Um, just if he doesn't fit their de- new defensive scheme. It seems like they're clearing house of that defense especially. So we'll see. But um, with Okora coming back, he got his younger brother who's going to play on the other edge too. He got Austin Bryant still under contract. Who else he got to play an end? Um, there's other dudes I'm not thinking of. Everson Griffin's gone. Trey Flowers is still there, so that'd be four defensive ends. You got, under contract, John Pinacini had a pretty good year last year. We'll see how he fits into the new, new defense. Um, Danny Shelton's gone. Christian, uh, was it, what's his name? Nick Williams is still there. That's his name. Nick Williams is still there, as of right now. I, I can see that guy getting cut still. Um, we've stripped we've stripped out our defense. Secondary, we got Okuda. You got Oriwarie. You got Mike Ford. You got Tracy Walker. You got Will, uh, Will Harris. Jayon Curse is gone. Um, man, we, we stripped down our defense pretty good. So I'm going to expect a very defensive-oriented draft or some later free agency. Um, I'm sorry, I just don't have a ton of big stuff to report, guys. I just want to give you guys my thought on the new contract that Romeo Cuora just signed and let you guys know like, what my opinions are on this team and let you guys know the most recent cuts, what's going on. And my final prediction before I end this podcast, I know it's not much of an episode 20, <laughs> but my final predictions are, I can see within the next few days, a free agent linebacker or two, or a safety. I could, okay, I could see any of the following positions getting brought. I'm not going to say players because that's all very speculative. Yes, all, all up to speculation. I could see a free agent safety, a free agent nickel corner, 
a free agent linebacker of any kind. I forgot Jamie Collins is still there too, playing outside, but whatever. A free agent linebacker of any kind. We, uh, two or three starting spots are up for grabs right now. And then some sort of a defensive tackle or a depth defensive end. So I could see all defense. This next wave of free agency lines will be, I think the lines are going to wait out this first one and not pay anybody huge money. They're, they're keeping a conservative approach. They're bringing back their guys and letting all the people walk. They're not going in and spending a ton of money yet. They'll probably wait until a guy like maybe a Denzel Perryman is available at linebacker. Um, you know, there's other guys I'm not naming right now, obviously, that I'm not thinking about top of my head. But there's a lot of dudes who are going to be second tier, third tier free agents this year. There's all the cuts that happened with all the new salary cap um, that are going to become available and that are going to become highly sought after. I could see the Lions waiting another couple of days, maybe Friday or Saturday, signing some signing some dudes. Because last year I made this po- I made a podcast on my other channel, uh, not shouting it out because I'm not posting the channel anymore. Um, but I mean, I could see them definitely being very active in the second, third wave of free agency. Last year they were very active in the first part of free agency. This year I think they sit back a little bit, save their money, go after guys on discount deals. Not pay anybody huge money because they don't really got the money to pay anybody right now. But they're freeing up a lot of cap room. Um, like I said before, Coleman, Dahl, Trufant, uh, Shelton, Daniel, James. Just to name a few guys who got cut. I mean, that's that's and restructuring Jimmy Collins' contract freed him up quite a bit of money. So I could definitely see them being able to go out and pursue some dudes in the second wave of free agency. We'll see, though. So guys, with all that being said, thank you for listening to this podcast. Seven round mock draft on the way, probably this weekend after this next wave of free agency is over. Um, thank you for listening. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.